An exceedingly rare mountain lion appears to have attacked an ex-con as he walks through dense woodland in Texas. But an attack like this is so rare that it may not have happened at all. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. This is the mysterious case of Christopher Whiteley's death. Welcome to Final Affliction. Christopher Allen Whiteley had tried to get on the straight and narrow, but had spent most of his adult life in prison and addicted to methamphetamine. However, after a five-year jail term spent in Billy Moore Correctional Center in Overton, Texas, things were finally looking up for him. He landed two jobs, one working in an Odessa oil field job and another painting houses. After being released in June, he had worked hard during the summer of 2020, saving up enough money to buy a car. He secured it for $500, a Chevy Blazer, which he intended on learning to drive that year. But Christopher would never learn to drive. Just as things were beginning to go right for him, they suddenly went badly wrong. Incarcerated for crimes such as aggravated assault, it could be assumed that he had some enemies out there. So when his body was found in some dense woodland, there were some serious questions to be answered. Who or what was to blame? It all began on December 2, 2020. At 28 years old, Christopher was heading to his house painting job in Fort Worth, Texas. That morning, he left his girlfriend's home in Lipan, an hour's drive away from Fort Worth. He planned to hitchhike to the city, but he never made it. Something terrible happened between Lipan and Fort Worth that day, but it wasn't until the next evening that his friend filed a missing persons case. The county sheriff's department began a search for the young man. He hadn't been spotted on the road, and it was assumed that he had taken a shortcut between his girlfriend's house and the main road where he had planned on thumbing a lift from. The shortcut was through an area of dense woodland. As officers scoured the trees and underbrush, it was tough going. There was initially no sign of human activity, but after a thorough search, they stumbled across Christopher's blue and white backpack. Moments later, they found Christopher's body. He was shirtless despite the cold weather, and he was slumped in some very dense scrub a few yards from his backpack. His throat had been cut open from one ear to the other. He had narrow scratch marks over his torso, face, and head. There was a huge amount of dried blood at the scene that had poured from his open neck wound. Immediately, deputies surmised that Christopher had been killed by a mountain lion, but animal experts were convinced this was not the case. Mountain lion attacks in Texas are unheard of, and sightings are incredibly rare. However, only the week before, a mountain lion was spotted near downtown Dallas. Could this have been the culprit in Christopher's death? Mike Bodenchuk, an experienced mountain lion trapper and director of Wildlife Services Texas, was called in to help with the investigation. His findings suggested that this was no mountain lion. Typically, mountain lions stalk their prey from behind. When they are within pouncing distance, they launch themselves onto the back of their prey. They use their long, sharp claws to latch onto the animal's flesh whilst delivering a fatal bite to the throat. The victim dies through asphyxiation. A mountain lion attack can be determined by not only the injuries sustained by the deceased, but also the telltale signs left behind by the cat. There were no puncture marks on Christopher's body where the mountain lion would have latched on with its claws. He had not been asphyxiated by powerful jaws crushing his windpipe. Instead, his arteries in his neck had been torn open and he had bled to death. And the scratch marks on his body were superficial, made by something a lot less powerful or a lot smaller than a big cat. None of these pointed towards a mountain lion. Furthermore, there are usually distinctive signs left behind by these wild cats. There was no disturbed vegetation, which often happens when a mountain lion makes a kill. There were no broken twigs or scuffed up dirt from a struggle between predator and prey. There were no drag marks to the dense bush where Christopher lay. His body had not been cached and hidden by the mountain lion to return to later, which is typical for these cats. His organs were intact, something mountain lions tend to devour first. In fact, none of him had been eaten at all. There were no feces found at the site, something which mountain lions leave behind to mark their cache, 
and there were no territorial scrapings in the form of mounds of vegetation, often marked with urine, either. The ground all around where Christopher lay was sandy soil. Investigators left behind footprints whilst they tried to determine exactly what happened, but there were no paw prints left behind of a mountain lion. There were, however, footprints of significance when all others left by investigators were discarded. Mike Bodenchuk began his investigation by working from the kill site outwards. This is when he spotted the unusual footprints, something that had been missed by the law enforcement team. Leading to the spot were two sets of human footprints, but leading away was only one set. The slick soled cowboy boots Christopher wore that day accounted for one set, but the others were made of heavy tread soles. Could Christopher's death have been a homicide? Was the owner of the shoes responsible? Investigators dismissed these findings, claiming that the other set of footprints could have been made by a landowner simply checking on his cattle. Walkers frequented the woods as well. It was impossible to determine that these footprints belonged to someone who witnessed what happened to Christopher. But they weren't the only set of interest to Mike Bodenchuk. He was now convinced that a mountain lion was not responsible for the attack, and although he suspected homicide, he also claimed that it could have been another animal that attacked Christopher. Footprints of coyotes, deer, hogs, house cats, and dogs were found near the scene. Of these footprints, he was most interested in those made by a dog. They were from a medium-sized hound, one such as a pit bull. There was a possibility that this was a rogue dog that had unexpectedly attacked Christopher. The severity of the sliced open throat could have been accounted for by a dog such as a pit bull, but it could also have been from a dog that was deliberately commanded to set upon Christopher, perhaps from one of his enemies, perhaps from the person with the thick tread soles. But even being attacked by a dog was questionable. Although pit bulls are capable of killing people, they do not take them down to the ground without a fight. There were no bite marks on Christopher's arms to suggest he fought off an aggressive dog before being floored by the animal. Medical examiners concluded that Christopher was indeed standing up when he was first attacked. Although he had some methamphetamine in his system, they did not believe that he was sitting or lying on the ground in a semi-conscious state when he was killed. Evidence suggests that he fell to the ground and then possibly crawled into the dense bush as he bled out. Remarkably, the medical examiners never took any DNA samples from Christopher's body. His fingernails were sent for analysis to determine whether there was any mountain lion DNA in them. The results came back negative. Those who believe that a big cat certainly was not responsible for the 28-year-old's death couldn't understand why the lead inspectors weren't investigating the case further. Significant leads came up, and there were so many unanswered questions like, why was Christopher shirtless in freezing conditions? Whose footprints led away from the crime scene? Why was his body washed before taking valuable DNA samples? His friends and family believe that the sheriff's department didn't want to waste any more time and resources on trying to track down an ex-con's killer. They settled on the conclusion that an animal killed Christopher and closed the case. For those who knew and loved Christopher, it was incredibly frustrating and heartbreaking not getting the answers they so desperately needed. Wildlife expert Mike Bodenchuk placed wildlife cameras at the site hoping to catch the culprit, but the only animals to show up on it were cows, deer, hogs, and a bobcat. Although he is not a law enforcement expert, Mike believes that another person was involved in Christopher's death, whether intentionally or not. It could have been a case of not being able to control their dog and leaving the crime scene without reporting it, or it could have been a deliberate act. Although the case is officially closed for Christopher's loved ones, it very much remains open. We may never know what truly happened to Christopher Whiteley, resulting in his mysterious final affliction.